Well, we just recently captured someone in ISIS, and as I understand it, um, they aren't being they're being held short term, and then they're going to be turned back to the Kurds. So, what about long term detention? You would agree that long term interrogation was quite helpful, for example, um, in gathering the information we needed to get Bin Laden. That's what worries me. What do we do in a long-term setting? Do we know? I, I would agree that there is a requirement for long-term detention, Senator. And do we know where that would be now? I, I, I don't know. That, that is a, a policy decision that uh, I think is being debated. Well, that's Senator Kelly Ayotte asking in a Senate Armed Services Committee hearing where we're going to put terrorists if and when we catch them, and if and when Guantanamo Bay actually shuts down. As you know, last month the administration released its plan to unwind operations at the detention center in Cuba. Senator Ayotte, Republican from New Hampshire, joins us now from Capitol Hill. Senator, it's nice to have you back on the program. Thanks, Senator. Appreciate it. Good what, to be with you. What an interesting exchange um, that you had yesterday during this hearing. You say not having a clear long-term detention plan is actually making us less safe today. Why is that? It's making us less safe because if you think about the intelligence we had to gather to capture and kill bin Laden, um, that took years to develop. And so when we f capture, as we have recently, our special forces, someone who apparently has a background in understanding the chemical weapons program of ISIS, if we don't keep that individual to have long-term interrogation, then we're missing opportunities to know what they know about the network to also put pieces together as we capture other people. And this administration has had absolutely no plan. Yes, they've killed people with drones, but when they've captured individuals, uh, for example, the uh, you know connect connected to bin Laden, bin Laden's son-in-law, they kept him on a ship for uh, 60 days and then shipped him to a court in New York City. And then, then he's given his Miranda rights and said, you have the right to remain silent. How does that help us gather intelligence? We need to have Guantanamo. And when we capture those on the battlefield terrorists, they should go to Guantanamo. We should ensure that we can interrogate them to protect our country against future attacks and know more about these terrorist networks. You mentioned the and drone. there's no plan. You mentioned the drone program, and I think that's an interesting point to raise here about how the lack of a long-term detention policy may be impacting our drone program and how and when we use that. What's your opinion on that? How does it impact the drone program when we don't have something long term in place to detain individuals? Well, I think, I think it's, first of all, um, if you look at the history with this administration over the last five years, I've been asking, where are we going to put these individuals if we capture, for example, the head of Al Qaeda tomorrow? And then I have people like the commander of AFRICOM saying, I'm going to need some lawyerly help on that. Can you imagine? And so how does it interact with the drone program? Well, in this way, um, you, you have, we, we, can ca we can kill terrorists, uh, but what about when we capture them? And if you look at the history of this administration, they've captured very few. And they haven't put anyone in long-term detention in terms of interrogation in Guantanamo. And so that, to me, makes us less safe because we need a location. And obviously, you saw the, the commander of Special Operations Command yesterday acknowledge that, yes, long-term detention is important for our security and gathering intelligence. What? And yet, if you look at the plan the president just proposed, there's nothing in it. He says we're going to deal with this on a case-by-case -case basis. Right. That is not a plan. Let me ask you, you mentioned the, uh, the recent detention of a high-level official within ISIS, and the Associated Press is breaking more news on that today, saying specifically it's the head of ISIS's uh, unit for chemical warfare. And, and you said in the hearing that it's, it's your understanding that we're holding this individual, or we have held him for two to three weeks, and we're going to turn him over to the Kurds. Um, what, what more can you tell our viewers about that and well, your concern this is all about based, being able this to is hold all him based, longer? Well, first of all, this is all based on public reports. It's also based on the fact that this administration, if you look at other individuals they've captured, they've only hold them for a short period. Um, they're being held right now, as I understand it, he's being held overseas. But why wouldn't we, given the high level nature of the reported relationship that this individual has to ISIS chemical weapons program, why wouldn't we put them in a detention facility so then when we capture another individual with ISIS, we can compare information, we can do long-term detention, we can ensure 
that we get the information to put together all that we know about their terrorist network so that we can defeat them. And it's, that's it's, why it's important that it not just be short term, yet they have no plan to do that as far as I can see. And there's nothing in the plan they released on Guantanamo except closing it. Well, and, and I'm we're concerned gonna, this makes us less safe. Uh, thank you for that, Senator. We're, we're, th this individual that's currently in detention apparently had relationships going back to Saddam Hussein as well. So a right. lot to look at there. Unfortunately, we're going to be cut off by a commercial. We appreciate the time, Senator. It's a big story where well, we're going to follow, yes. and we'll be right back with more happening now. Well, I appreciate it, Jenna. Thank you.